This is Crossroads, VTR 1907, episode 3698, part one, take one. Your dad always used to give me a hand with Two it. Two grown men in the house and you're pulling these. I don't know. Kevin! Rock Mum! Will you leave me? You're straining yourself. No, but they've got to go out by the front, Glenda. Then it'll be in a minute. If they're not at the bags out at the front gate, they're going to go straight by. I don't have to go all that trouble again, you know, ringing up the men and asking them to make a special collection. What's going oh, on? Listen, will you take them out the front for Mum? Oh, he's in his dressing gown. I can't oh, manage. Oh, just do that. Out the front, yeah. please. <laughs> All the little things, isn't it? You don't realise what it means till you're on your own. You mean on your own? You got us. Well, Ron will be going back to Scotland soon, won't he? And I can't expect to have you and Kevin forever, can I? He's not going to get rid of us that easily. A couple of bills by the look of it and a package. Oh, it's addressed to Dad. Open it, will you, love? Well, have you finished in the bathroom? Well, I'm in there ten minutes. More like half an hour. Oh, it's from a holiday company. It's uh, travel tickets and oh, information and things. It's a holiday booked. I'd completely... We were going away next week, next Saturday. Oh, he was so looking forward to it. Give me a hand, eh? Never mind, Mum. Look, I'll take him back to the travel agents and explain. Dad probably took out holiday insurance, so you'll get a refund. Yeah. Oh, you try and think of everything, don't you? But you never do. It struck me this morning. What about his clothes? What am I going to do about them? I mean, they wouldn't fit either of you, even if you wanted them. I mean, there's shoes, overcoat, two good suits. Well, I'll make up a parcel for the charity shop. I'll do it this afternoon while you're out. Oh, would you, love? Yeah, don't worry, leave it to me. Ron, do you want your breakfast now when you come down? No, keep it hot. Mummy, you, you try and eat something this morning. Well, I'll have a bit of toast then. Oh, I've forgotten the marmalade. Oh, I'll get it. I, uh... Rang the clinic last night. You what? Make another appointment for us. Oh, that's marvellous. When? Next week. I've got to see a doctor. Oh, that's all right. I heard. Mama, I Still did... determined to go on with the idea, then? It's what Glenda wants, and so do I. I don't see any point in hanging about. Oh, no, no, don't wait. Do as you please. After all, no concern of mine, is it? Come in. Stick it down over there, will you? Stick what down? Oh, it's you. I thought it was the girl with the breakfast tray. Oh, no. What do you want, then? Uh, I wanted to have a, a little talk with you, see, without them being here. Them? Who's them? What? Uh, Mac and Sedley. Yeah? Well, go on, then. What do you want? It's not their fault. What isn't? Mine. Listen, son, if, you, uh, if you're trying to tell me something, you're going to have to do better than that. Well, it's about all the trouble, you know, with the, with the car. Yeah? So what about it? Well, if I hadn't had told Mr Ashley... Yeah? ...about you bringing it in, special job, rush-like, then he wouldn't have known nothing. Thank you. Well, it's all right. It's just that... When I told him, I, I didn't think it mattered, Nancy, because, like, you being his dad. Yeah, that figures. But now people are saying things. Who? Well, people at the motel. What are they saying? Well, that with the car that did it, Mr Brownlow. Oh. Where was it? No, it wasn't. <sighs> That's all right, then. So is that it? Huh? Is that what you came to see me about? Hmm? Oh, yeah, that bit. Uh, 
and uh hmm? sorry. David didn't tell me you were giving in your notice. David doesn't know. You've made it very short. Short and final. Yes. So final that I should think David would... has no choice but to accept it. Would you show it to him when he comes in, please? I don't think I ought to be here. It is, after all, my day off. changing the color of this. He's a man of many moods. He only did it six months ago. Look, he pays the bills. We're not in business to argue. Base coat and lacquer. Oh, yeah? And right down to the metal, yeah? Oh, there's no need, Chad. It's what the man wants, Mac. Okay, okay. When is this all promised for? Monday week. Oh, come on, that's pushing it. So we push. Okay, you're the boss. Oh, recognition at last. <laughs> Crossroads Garage. We're still waiting on that part. Well, you know how it is. Uh, it's promised for this afternoon, but there are promises and promises. I'll give you a ring. Don't worry. Right you are. Bye-bye. Morning. Good morning. Don't tell me you've come to take my staff away again. Oh, no. Why would I want to do that, eh? Well, why did you want to in the first place? I needed some signed statements. Building up a case. Piece by piece. And uh, am I in on it, Ashley? I shall want a statement from you eventually that the car was brought in here, repaired, and it didn't go through with the book. It has now. It didn't then. And that's vital, is it? Hello. Yes, hang on a minute. It's for you. Oh. Probably New Scotland Yard. Thanks. Hello. Yep. Oh, how long ago was that? Oh, right. Thanks very much. Reception. Fascinating. It might well be. Dad's had a visitor. Iris. Yes, Mr. Paul? When I call you, I expect some response. Call? Cool. Sorry, I must be going deaf. I didn't hear you call. I signal. Oh, is that what it was? You must be losing your click then. Don't be impertinent. These cups and saucers, how long have they been here? No idea. I've just come on duty in here. I've been working in the kitchen. Well, get a tray and clear up the mess at once. Yeah, I'll get a tray. You're allowing the place to look uncared for and untidy. This I will not tolerate. No. I told you, I've only just come on duty. Oh, this is not an isolated incident. I'm referring to the state of the whole bar this morning. I cleaned that first well, thing. I doubt that very much. Are you calling me You out? may have waltzed around the bar counter with a feather duster once or twice, but cleaning it, you most certainly did not. Well, don't you come the ass with me. I came in here with a vacuum and a duster. You can ask anyone. Mrs. Hunter saw me. Keep one. your voice down. You want our customers to hear. I don't give a monkeys if they do hear. You started it. Just who the heck do you think you are anyway? Telling me off for something that ain't my fault. How dare you speak to me like that? I'll speak to you any way I want. You don't own me body and soul, you know. In fact, I wouldn't be doing this grotty job if it didn't suit me books. Wouldn't you indeed? Well, in that case, it might suit both our books admirably if you were to stop doing me any favours. Oh, are you giving me the push? I most certainly am. You can collect your cards and your money from the office. Better still, I'll have them sent after. You can go right now, this very moment. You're finished.
Uh, Crossroads, episode 3698, VTR 1907, part 2, take 1. Someone. There are telephones. But my sister doesn't know anything about but it. Have you got a lawyer? Of course I haven't got a lawyer. What do ordinary people want lawyers for? Well, you've got to have one now, believe me. She goes on and on ever since I've been there about the state I'm in. About my nerves being in shreds. She thinks I'm ill. 236-9234. I can't go on like this, Reg. I just can't. I've been thinking. Maybe if I go out to Ted in Paris and join him there. I could stay with him. I could talk him into taking a holiday. Two or three weeks. Give it time to blow over. Uh, Maury, this is Rachel Lamont. Listen, are you going to be in the office all day? Reg. All right, I've got to put a bit of action your way. Reg, I am not seeing anyone. OK, we'll see you later in the day, then. Bye. I'm going to Ted. Listen, you have got one chance, and that is to come clean. I mean, like, spotless. Now, you will go and see Maury. You will go to the Nick with him. And you will take his advice and you will tell all. No, I won't. I'm going to Paris. Linda, they are on to this now. There is no way they are going to let it go. Now, why don't you make life simple for yourself? Look, you can't make me stay here. I'm not trying to make you stay here. I'm not trying to make you do anything. I am simply giving you some advice as a friend. Now, I don't think that uh, Ted would uh, like your attention too much just at the moment. I mean, if they see you two together, they might start looking more closely at him and that wouldn't go down a bundle, would it? Hell is that? It's all right, it's all right. They've just come for the breakfast tray. All right, come in. Hello, Mrs. Nolan. Thanks for running into you. You've never said anything about him being a copper. Ah, oh, well, we touch lightly on that one, don't we? You see, I'm what you might call the white sheep of the family. How's the fort? No. no problems? They have a way of cropping up on Kate's stay off? No, no problems at all. Good. Were you here when Kate left us? Yes. What'd she say? That it was final. Nothing else? That she didn't want to be around when you read it. What did you say? Well, nothing really. What did you think? I thought that you would, will, try to change her mind. And what did you hope? That I'd fail? No. No? No. I can imagine what your state of mind would be if you failed. She's very clever with her timing of her self-sacrifices. You don't see she wants to leave simply because the girl is still here. She doesn't want to distress her with her mere presence. No, I, I think of her a trifle more highly than that. She's leaving because she knows because she knows that she has asked of you as much as any woman can ask of any man before he finds it too much. So as far as you're concerned, she can face alone whatever the police might want to do to her. Everyone's alone in the dock, David. I'll never be able to cope with all this, Ron. Well, the solicitor will help. All you have to do is go and see him and he'll work out the value of what Dad left. There's the house, the insurance, a bit of money in the bank, and there's some money to come from his work, like last month's salary and some back holiday pay. Then his pension. I'll be in touch with you about that. Why is it all so complicated? I mean, I'm his wife. They know that. He wouldn't have wanted to go outside the family. It's the law of the land, Mum. Dad died without making a will, so you've got to go through all this legal red tape just to prove your entitlement. But it's not as bad as it looks. 
And all you have to do is to apply for these letters of administration, like it says here. Can you do that for me, love? I mean, you can talk to people. If I don't get back to work soon, I'll be out of a job. You're sure you're staying for Christmas, aren't you? They can't expect you back before then. I'm already a day or two overdue, but... Well, if you want, I'll no, phone... No, 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 you go back. No, I'm just being daft. I'm leaning on you too much, like some stupid old woman. No, your job's too important. You can't afford to risk anything these days. No, I'll be all right. Housekeeper to a busy motel, scared of a few forms. <laughs> You'll walk in. Yeah, I'll be all right. I won't be the first woman to have to... I never thought I'd be sitting here talking about how much money... If he'd been ill, you see, if I'd been prepared... But to walk out of the house like that... Yeah, I know. Never to see him again. We'd had a row, you know, did I tell you? Some stupid argument about... I've even forgotten what it was now. Oh, yeah, shoes. He bought some new shoes to go to the bowls club dinner and I laughed at him because they were too tight. Oh, he could have had a dozen pairs of shoes. Why didn't I go with him? Why did I let him go out of the house like that? I shouted at him, you know. I said that if he was late home, I'd lock the door on him. Oh, Mum, I've heard you say that hundreds of times. You've never meant it. No. But I didn't have the chance to tell him this time, did I? The chance to talk it over and laugh about it like we always used to. He'd have forgotten all about it by the time he got to the motel. Glenda, everybody said what a good time he was having at that do. He wasn't brooding over anything you said, was he? You're too close for that. <laughs> Rouse. Always been a bit of a joke in this house. Always blown over, never been anything serious. You've got nothing to blame yourself for, Mum. If I'd gone with him, he'd be alive now. Oh, you don't know I that. do, love. That's just it. I do. If I hadn't been so stubborn and pig-headed about that bowls club committee, if I'd gone with him, if I'd watched what he'd been drinking, got a taxi when I thought he'd had enough, walked home with him even, it wouldn't have happened. And you think that's nothing to blame yourself for? All right. I know how you feel. I understand what you're trying to say. But, well, look at it this way. He was lucky the way he went. Lucky? Yes, Mum, lucky. He went quickly without knowing a thing about it. And he went after a good night out with the lads. You'll never know old age. Never suffer pain. Or the humiliation of being dependent on other people just to get him through the day. And he's been spared the grief of losing you. I reckon that's just about as much as you can ask for when they talk about going peacefully, don't you? It's hard on you, Mum. Not on him. You've got the worst of it. But he's all right now. I've told her, Ash. Oh, that is the conversation we have just had. She's on her way round to see you. <laughs> Phone Maury Lander, check with him. How reassuring. I'm so glad she's got a brief. Oh, come on now. You know the form. The hell is all this? Uh, it's all right. Just relax. Well, he's your son. That's it, isn't it? And what do you mean by that exactly? Nothing. Nothing. No, look, she's in a state. She's been living with this for the past week. I mean, what do you expect? I expect you to fix this one, Reg. Oh, come on. Just like you fixed everything else. What's all this, then? Oh, come on, Sonny. He's famous for it. Even my Ted used to take his hat off to Reggie. There are flyovers crumbling all over the city because one of his yeah, just you cut that up and do it. I say, he's got a perfect right, Dad. What's your game, you two? What are you playing at? Nothing, love. This is straight down the line. <laughs> he wouldn't know how. You fix this one for me, Reggie. Here and now. Tell your little boy to call it off. I think you'll find he can't do that, Mrs Nolan. You see, the funny thing is, all this power you think he's got, well, it doesn't quite reach as far as me. But I think you are a very interesting lady, and I think we'll have quite a bit to talk about.
don't say a thing till Molly Landy gets there. Understand? Seems like I've got to look after myself, Reg. I'll say what's best for me. 